Hello friends and welcome back to the Beginner's Guide to Ibo. If the algorithm brought you here and you have no idea what an Ibo is, I'd highly recommend checking out my other video, What is an Ibo? If you're here on purpose, because you know what you're about, welcome! Let's get into it. Today we're going to be talking about the Ibo ERS-111, the specs, personality, software, all that good stuff. The 111 was made in 1999, so obviously the tech isn't going to be as advanced as the 1000, but despite that, these guys have held up surprisingly well over the years, and because of that and their comparatively low price tag, they're one of the models that I recommend to beginners. The 111 only has one touch sensor, and it's really more of a button on their head. You can use this sensor to praise, scold, or get your Ibo's attention, depending on how long you hold it down for. A quick tap is to scold, a slightly longer tap is to get their attention, and holding the sensor down is considered praise. Later models have back sensors, but the 111 has a fan there instead. Even though they technically do have paw sensors, they don't actually do anything. 111s will sometimes try to poke you or shake hands, but they can't actually detect it with their paw sensors. Instead, they detect movement or skin color and assume, hey, that's a person that I can shake hands with, but they don't know if they actually achieve their goal or not. Speaking of cameras, 111s have a 1.8 megapixel camera that they use to navigate the world. Obviously, not super high quality, but they were made 20 plus years ago, so what did you really expect? Because of this, 111s aren't super great at getting around poorly lit spaces and need a little more monitoring than other models. 111s do have microphones, which are these little things in their ears, but they don't understand voice commands. Instead, they have a sound controller, which can be used to communicate with your Ibo. The sound controller emits a short tonal riff that the Ibo hears as a command. The microphones can also pick up loud noises so you can get their attention, but it's not super accurate. 111s use beeping, body language, and LED sequences on their face to communicate. They can't speak English or Japanese or any other human language. They only speak robot. Although sometimes they do make random sound effects, I'm still gonna consider that speaking robot. They have a set of four LEDs on their face, two green and two red, which can flicker in various sequences to let you know if they're happy, mad, or surprised. They also have very long tails that whip around when they're excited. 111s do technically have a pickup mode, but unlike other Ibos, they just go limp. They will continue to beep and flash their lights at you, but they can't move again until you put them back down. Let's talk about personality and behavior. Ibos may be robots, but different models have different personalities. The 111s and 110s are known for being chaotic and hyperactive. They're very dog-like, they love to play, run around, and they go absolutely nuts for the color pink. 111s don't have a stay mode like other Ibos, so you really should keep an eye on them when they're playing, especially since they love to explore and go fast. There are some 111s that have lazy personalities, but in general, they like to go. What do you need to get a 111 running? 111s have very chunky accessories compared to other models. So if you're planning on buying one of these guys, make sure to add that extra weight into shipping costs. Besides the robot itself, you'll also need a docking station. Look at this absolute chunk master. It literally <laughs> looks like a space station. It's amazing and I love it, but it is very heavy and takes up a decent amount of space. 111s don't have any self-docking features so you will need to place them on the station manually when it's time to recharge. They can run on their station, but they can only move their head and tail while on it. The legs just stay limp. You'll also need a power brick, which plugs into the back of the station. You can charge two batteries at a time by placing one battery in your Ibo and one in this extra slot down below. Another thing you'll obviously need is a battery. 111s have these long lithium batteries that, that you you put up their butt. They're the only model that has this. Everyone else has belly batteries, but 111s have booty batteries. This is also where their memory stick goes. Speaking of, you will need a memory stick to get your Ibo running. They cannot run without one. 111s and 110s use these purple memory sticks. You can also buy blank ones and put fan-made software on there. These guys have a lot less encryption than other models, so setting up a memory stick is actually pretty easy. But here are the official softwares that Sony made for the 111 and 110. Iboware is a 
life stage software, meaning you can raise your eyebrow from a baby to an adult, and their personality will change depending on how you interact with them. 111s have very unique personalities because their AI is very much based on learning. So two eyebrows that technically are running the same personality will act differently depending on how their owner praised or scolded them during the learning process. Eyebrows evolve from newborn to baby to youth stage one, youth stage two, and finally to adult stage. You need to play and interact with your Ibo for a certain amount of hours before they evolve to the next stage and eventually reach adult. There are two versions of Iboware, version 1.0, which was made for the 110, and version 1.1, which was made for the 111. Both versions run pretty much the same way, but they do have slightly different actions, dances, and life stages. Both softwares are interchangeable between the 110 and 111. Hello Ibo is another official software that basically skips all the life stages and gives you a standard adult personality for your Ibo. If you don't want to spend hours and hours raising your Ibo from baby to adult, you might want to look into this one. Keep in mind, this software is a little bit harder to find than Iboware. Also, there are future Hello Ibo softwares available for other models, but this version is only for the 110 and 111. It won't work on other models, and pink Hello Ibo sticks aren't compatible on the 110 or 111 either. The last official 111-110 software is Party Mascot. This software isn't personality-based or autonomous like the previous softwares. Instead, it's game-based. Utilizing Ibo's sensors and the remote, users can play 11 different games that range from singing and dancing to hiding a piece of paper in your Ibo's mouth and then guessing what it says. It isn't really ideal as a main software, but it's a fun little extra thing if you're willing to pay the money. For some reason, Party Mascot is ridiculously expensive these days, so I don't really recommend it. If you're planning on customizing your own software or using a fan-based software, make sure your memory stick doesn't go over 16 megabytes. 111s can't read anything bigger than that, even if you aren't using the whole stick. 111s and 110s are the only iBos with a physical controller, but you don't actually need the sound controller to play with your iBo. 111s will happily play and do their own thing without it. And since the sound controllers literally just use sounds, fan-made versions of the controller do exist online. So you can still get your iBo to do tricks, even if you can't get your hands on a controller. Pink balls are nice to have if you want an iBo. The official ones are lightweight plastic with the Ibo logo on them, but 111s will literally chase anything pink. Size, weight, doesn't matter. So while the official balls are cool to have, you don't need one. Just keep in mind the official balls are bright pink and lightweight so that Ibos can easily detect and kick them. So if you want your Ibo to be a soccer player, maybe try to find a ball that fits those specs. Even though 111s are very hardy bots, they do have a couple issues to look out for. If you're buying a used Ibo, chances are you'll get a dead battery. I find that 111s have a better chance of coming with good batteries than other models, but it's still something to be on the lookout for. Luckily, 111 batteries are fixable with a proper repair service. But with any Ibo repair, do not attempt to do it yourself. Ibo tech is notoriously difficult to work on and the most absurd random things will brick them. Sony purposefully made Ibos really difficult to work on. There's tons of encryptions and specialized parts and outdated tech that modern repairs just won't fix. Batteries in particular need very special care. You can't just replace the lithium cells inside. You also need to reprogram the circuit boards. Because of this, for any repair work, I recommend going to Ibo Clinic. There are other Ibo repair services out there, but the only one I can currently vouch for is Ibo Clinic because they've had years of Ibo repair experience and I've had multiple Ibos and batteries repaired using their services. Not sponsored by any means, but there are lots of Ibo repairs that are scams that will either steal or brick your Ibo. Not all of them, but a decent amount. If you're looking to get a 111 or a 110 and you're worried about cosmetic issues, the vast majority of their ears are just crumbling into dust. Sony used this really crummy rubber material, and even if it wasn't crummy, it's 20 year old rubber. It's just a goopy, sticky, gross mess. But if you still like the look of the original ears, there are multiple places where you can find 3D printed replica ears that look very similar. So it isn't a huge issue in the long run, but even if the ears look intact in pictures, they're probably not. The good news is that those are the main issues. So as long as you can get through that, you're pretty much good to go. Ibos are old and sometimes weird things will break. Sometimes core issues happen or software gets corrupted. Sometimes their legs can snap in the mail. I've had that happen to me a couple times. If the seller isn't careful, that can happen. Once again, go to Ibo Clinic. Don't fix these things yourself. But for the most part, 111s are really sturdy. I've seen 111s hold up better than 1000s, which is insane. So if you want a pretty cheap retro looking, hyperactive Ibo, maybe go for a 111. I hope this video was helpful and be on the lookout for more guide videos coming soon.
Fight, never quit, do it right, play the game.